Gilroy is the fastest growing city in Santa Clara County. The population here grew by 2.1 percent last year. This rapid growth is putting a bit of a strain on roads and city services. Joining us tonight to talk about Gilroy's future challenges and opportunities is Gilroy Mayor Roland Velasco. Stay with us. Welcome, Mayor. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Well, thank you for the invitation. Oh, they're quite welcome. So let's, let's do something right away that I think would be of interest to most people. Okay. What is your vision for Gilroy? What would you like to see here? Well, I think, uh, you know, first and foremost, um, just a great overall community, uh, safe community, uh, strong and safe neighborhoods, uh, strong schools. I think all these things play a, a role in why people want to come to Gilroy. And so to the extent possible, that would certainly be my mission to try to promote um, healthy neighborhoods, uh, safe neighborhoods, um, good jobs, and, uh, and good schools. What do you think is, in your mind, what is the biggest obstacle to achieving your goals? Well, unfortunately, like so many things in life, uh, it takes a lot of money. Um, you know, we could certainly do some things, um, but um, it, it's difficult to pay for all those things that we want to do. And so that's always a challenge. So as you look at Gilroy, from your perspective, what is the greatest um, challenge right now? Well, I think, um, Gosh, there's so many challenges um, that are facing our city, and not just Gilroy. It's really important that that residents understand that some of the challenges we face are challenges that are faced up and down the state. For example, um, we touched a little bit about um, financing, the way cities are financed. Um, in California, is very unique than any other states. Um, we have... Um, challenges with the schools. The city of Gilroy has no direct responsibility over the school system. Um, we have challenges with our infrastructure. We have challenges with public safety. So there are a number of challenges, um, but from the resident's perspective, you know, they're just interested in the services that that we're able to provide or that they're interested in having. And so trying to meet that demand is, is absolutely critical. Well, one of the, one of the, the critical things in, in Gilroy is housing. And you recently had said that it's important going forward to kind of evaluate the rate of growth. How would you like to see the growth in Gilroy managed? Well, actually, I would like to see it slowed down. Um, and so right now we are going through our next general plan update that will take us to 2040. Um, it is my intention to see that that housing rate slow down. Unfortunately, we are going to have a lot of pressure put on us, not just with the county, but also with the state, to build more housing to supply the much needed demand for housing. So whereas I want to slow it down so that our services could keep up with the demand from our current residents, there's going to be a tremendous amount of pressure put on elected officials um, to build more housing. And you said the pressure comes from the state of California? Yes, uh, the state um, through various uh, agencies puts pressure on local jurisdictions to, um, to create more housing. As a matter of fact, the legislature recently passed um, some sweeping bills that actually takes land use authority away from local governments so that it streamlines the process and, um, and prevents cities from saying no to housing projects. Hmm. So, so if, uh, if that happens, what would be the downside of more housing? Well, the downside of more housing is that housing does not pay for itself in terms of services. And I could give you a perfect example. 
if the average price of a home in Gilroy is $700,000, under Prop 13, we're paying um, approximately 1%. It's actually a little bit more because of some school bonds and things, things like that. But let's just use 1% as the, as the base. 1% of 700000 is $7,000. Now, most people, when they pay their property taxes, they're writing a check out for $7,000. They think all that money comes to the city of Gilroy. That is not the case. What happens is each jurisdiction takes their share of money. Um, some of it goes to the water district. Some of it goes to the county. Some goes to the state. A big portion of it goes to uh, the school districts. The city of Gilroy gets about 9% of that $7,000. So for a single family home that costs about $700,000, we're only getting about $630 of that. That $630 does not pay for the streets, the police, the fire, the parks, uh, you know, all the services that I want to be able to provide to our residents. Hmm. And so where do you get the money for those other services? That's a great question. That's why it is so important to have a strong economic development policy um, here in Gilroy. That's why you see jurisdictions competing against other jurisdictions. Gilroy competes against Hollister and uh, Morgan Hill and Salinas and just our surrounding communities for jobs, for retail. There's a concept called the fiscalization of land use and it's uh, why you see a lot of retail popping up along freeways as you're driving down the freeway because that sales tax money comes directly to those cities. So you see, you see the result of that. And so sales tax is one of the ways that you can get money for services. Sales tax is one of the ways that we get money for services. It's uh, sales tax, property tax, and um, and TOT are the three big areas that we, TOT is a transit occupancy tax. It's the tax that uh, outsiders pay when they check into a motel. Um, so those are the revenue sources for cities. So, so since you mentioned hotels, um, uh, can we talk a little bit about the uh, Great Wolf Lodge? Is that, that project would bring a lot of outsiders here and that tax would come into play. Um, is that a thing anymore or is it disappearing? Unfortunately, Great Wolf uh, made the business decision that they wanted to look at other jurisdictions that would allow them to um, construct their facility, uh, their future facility as quickly as possible. And so to that end, that's exactly what they're doing. Um, they have investors that are eager to, to make some money and they did not want to take a long process that they envisioned going through here in Gilroy. So they're looking at other places. Um, we have sent a very clear message to Great Wolf that um, if they're ever interested in Gilroy to come on back, I'm still willing to meet with them. They have said that they still want to consider Gilroy. They just don't think it could be, as, you know, now. So what would uh, what is the obstacle for them? Is it like the land isn't ready or the or there are obstacles at the planning commission? Well, um, it, it, it's the land is not ready. There is some um, where it was proposed was at uh, some underutilized land at Gilroy Gardens. There are some structures there that would have to get moved. But beyond that, they would have to go through an environmental review process, and that alone could take a year, year and a half. And then you build, they tack on construction time. So, you know, we're talking a number of years out. There are other jurisdictions that already have the environmental review either completed or already underway. And so that's what they were looking at. So is that something that um, the city would con consider looking at large portions of land and thinking, let's review this now in case somebody wants to? You're absolutely right because um, I have asked uh, our city administrator to schedule um, some land use uh, study sessions and that's coming up in the next couple of weeks. So we will be talking uh, exactly about that, kind of taking a big picture, what is economic development in Gilroy, kind of narrowing it down to this underutilized land at um, at Gilroy Gardens and saying, you know, what's the economic development plan for that, that land there? 
And then also, what is the role of economic incentives to lure companies to, um, to Gilroy? Um, Amazon, as you know, has recently um, put out bids for um, um, requests for, for bids. They received, uh, I think, in the neighborhood of 260 Everybody wants bids uh, for, for Amazon. And you should see the amount of money that some of these communities are throwing at Amazon to try to get them there. So economic incentives plays a role in, in development, economic development here in California. And I think it's really important for the community to know that. Well, I know that um, you have spoken about that before, that we really need to look at jobs in Gilroy. So what do you, so but not Amazon mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and, and not the, the Great Wolf Lodge, what, do, what ideas could be developed to bring more jobs to Gilroy? Well, I, again, that's why um, I want to focus on this economic development study session so that we look at the lands and see what kind of jobs we could potentially bring. Too often the city gets blamed for not having, you know, these high paying jobs. The reality is, is as much as we want to have those types of jobs, um, we have to have the land available for it. We have to have the workforce available um, to try to lure some of these companies down to Gilroy. At the end of the day, it's these companies decide that they want to come to Gilroy. We can't force a a square peg into a round hole. And um, so we're still trying to figure out what that strategy is going to actually look like. So what do you, do you, do you project or have ideas about what the workforce ought to be? Do you have like, are you working with maybe Gavilon to train the right people to be ready for certain industries to come here? Well, Gavilon actually, um, to the best of my knowledge, actually does a lot of that research to um, provide the, um, the, the, the depth of training that they need and the width of training that they need for their students. So I think Gavilan is a well-kept secret um, here in South County. Um, more and more kids are, are finding out about it and they're going to school. I think that's great. Um, you know, I'm a graduate of Gavilan. Um, so I think Gavilan is really the place to be as far as getting that base level of education uh, and then deciding whether or not you're ready to move on to a four-year. Now we don't, I guess, um, the jobs that are available in Gilroy, there's quite, there's teaching jobs, nursing jobs, um, first responders, police, fire, that sort of thing. But the, and those wages are middle class or upper middle class wages, but they still can't find a home here that doesn't break their budget. What are your, as you look into the future, what are your ideas to, um, to help those people become Gilroy citizens and not have to be living somewhere else? That's tough because again, it goes all. It all goes back to the cost of land, and um, the more pressure we put on um, on developers um, to for you know for for certain types of housing, it drives up that price of land. And so um, my goal has always been. I want to see a variety of housing stock in Gilroy, everything from apartments to high-end homes, so that no matter what your income level is, you could find a housing type for you. Mm -hmm. Well, that's, that sounds very good. <laughs> uh, well, so there are some projects going on now. Can we discuss those in the context of, of where they fit? Sure. So there's the um, Alexander Station project, which is sort of like a really, I mean, everyone knows it, but you can't miss that. Um, tell us how that fits in. Well, um, unfortunately, I was sitting in the council audience in the summer of 2014 when that project was approved by the city council. And uh, because that project was approved, it was one of the impetuses behind me deciding that I wanted to run for council. We had a former uh, school board trustee get up before the council and say, this is a bad project. We had a couple other people saying, this is not a good project. Um, and the council ended up approving it. I think it was approved on a four to three or five to two vote. Um, what that project is designed to do is to meet the, the demands for some of the lower income um, population. That's all great. I don't have a problem with that. My concern with that particular project is obviously the location of it, 
the size of it, the scale of it, um, and the density. Um, I think that project would have been a good project, shrunk down a little bit, and potentially moved to another location. Now, how does high density fit into the scheme for Gilroy? Because if you can't, I mean, there is limits to how far we can grow out, so growing up is the only option. What do you think about that? That's right. So um, in 2016, uh, voters of Gilroy passed Measure H, which was an urban growth boundary. And essentially what Measure H did was it put this artificial ring around the city of Gilroy. So we don't have the luxury of moving out uh, anymore we are forced to move up with, um, with, with our housing needs. That's gonna be a challenge. Um, not everybody wants to move up, um, so it could potentially put uh, more pressure on the cost of land, which would drive up costs, which makes it more expensive to, to buy. Um, some people want to have a backyard. They might not get it now if they're building up. Um, so it's going to be kind of interesting. We haven't seen the, the full effects of what Measure H is going to be yet. But my, my job as mayor, I have to respect the will of the voters. And they passed this Measure H, so now we, we have to deal with it. Okay. Well, I know the, the company that's building the Alexander Station pro also has another project, um, they say, on the north end of town with 98 homes. It, are those homes, or is that another uh, kind of high density project? A little bit of both. Um, it's, um, it's not the density that you see over here at Alexander, um, but they are um, some smaller style homes that are over in the North Gilroy area. So what do you think about, or have you thought about, um, like mixed housing, like developments that have some, some of everything? Um, I, I think that's great. Uh, again, we're getting ready for our general plan 2040, and that will be called out in that general plan. So you'll have uh, potentially um, you know, retail on the lower floor and um, you know, apartments or condos up on the, the mm -hmm. top floor. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we will have common. that, yeah. yeah, we will have that mix. Sort of the walkable neighborhood kind of thing. Exactly, exactly. But again, you know, it, it's difficult to force that kind of um, living arrangement. Somebody has to want to, to um, a developer has to want to invest in that and they're gonna do their market research to determine whether or not that would work in Gilroy. So that's the trick, isn't it? Getting the right, because of course city doesn't build houses. So how do you get the developers to come here? And what do they want? Well, um, we had um, a very interesting meeting at the last general plan committee, um, because you're absolutely right. The city, and this is something else the city gets blamed for, is we don't build housing. All we do is zone land for housing. The developer has to come to Gilroy, identify some land, and say, okay, with this particular type of land and the zoning for it, what's the product mix I could build that would sell to, um, to his buyers? And so it's really up to them to kind of figure that out. Uh, we will have to approve the project, obviously, um, but um, it's, it's got to be up to the developer to come forward. Does, I know I, uh, Santa Cruz County does this. I'm wondering if um, a Gilroy or Santa Clara County does reach out to developers and say, here's what we have. You know, this is a great place to locate. Do so you have like a promotional team for that sort of thing? We have the uh, Gilroy Economic uh, Development Corporation, which will try to promote and answer any questions and act as an um, ombudsman for businesses. Um, with regards to housing, no, we don't really uh, have that. We do have a developer's roundtable that meets occasionally to try to resolve some issues. Um, but again, it's very general as far as, um, as, far as the, the types of developers. 
you know, they're not all housing developers. Ah, so you get a mix, right. a mix there, which actually leads me to my next question. I know that you want to um, retain uh, millennials and younger residents and try to get them to stay in Gilroy, but uh, the kind of the complaint for them is there's nothing to do here, and um, so maybe some kinds of those sorts of developers that develop like restaurant and, and more sort of um, uh, uh, fun and hospitality things might be um, a help in that. Yeah, but you're right. Um, but again, the developer is going to do their research, and if they can't get those millennials to want to come to their particular project, then they are not going to invest their money in building it. So it's a chicken or an egg thing. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so what other ideas do you have to... Um, to bring the, to keep millennials or attract them, what do you think we need to have in Gilroy that would make this place desirable for that age group? Well, little by little, um, we are um, making improvements to our downtown. Um, last night, I was just at a ribbon cutting at uh, Bartenders Union, and um, Bartenders Union is the perfect example of somebody who walks into a particular bar, saw a need and said, you know what, I think I can make this work. And that was really the impetus for, for the, uh, the owner there to get some investors, and, uh, and he pulled it out. Um, he said uh, that they are providing a good product um, in a place that has a good vibe. And, and as I said last night, uh, when I was making the, uh, doing the ribbon cutting, Almost every downtown business, vacant building, has had some sort of inquiry moving forward, whether it's a restaurant, whether it's a, a, um, a shop of one type or another. All these vacant buildings that are currently there are getting some sort of inquiries, and I think that's good. Once we could populate the downtown, I think people will have a reason to show up and stay in Gilroy, including those millennials. So you know what I notice when I drive downtown is that, that a lot of there are a lot of empty buildings, and a lot of them need work. They're like they have to be. There are some of them still haven't opened, I guess, since the earthquake. Mm -hmm. So what what can be done about? Are there, are there any innovative ideas coming to you about what we might do about the? the empty buildings or the, the buildings in need of repair? So some of those buildings that are in need of repair or, or empty right now are actually going through a renovation. You don't see it on the exterior, but inside there is a lot of work being done. Um, the perfect example is the Halls building, the former Halls building at the corner of 6th and Monterey. You see a little bit of work on the outside, but the real work is all being done inside. And so um, little by little, we are removing these, uh, these buildings off of our uh, unreinforced masonry list. And once they're brought up to code, we're opening them up. Property owners will start to be able to um, increase rents with more activity. Um, and I think that will actually draw in some of those um, absentee landowners, uh, prop building owners, uh, who don't live in Gilroy really don't care about the building because for them it's you know just a write-off or something. Mm. So well, we're, I'm I'm really hoping that we're going to be able to attract some of those property owners back. Do you think we can get to the point where it's sort of it's like an inviting, engaging, thriving downtown? Like that is certainly my goal. <laughs> uh, I mean, every council uh, that I could uh, remember has that goal in mind. I I really feel that uh, over the last year we've, we've turned a corner and um, as I said, every building, every vacant building has had some sort of inquiry now. Some of them have not come to fruition. Some of them I believe are in their due diligence phase, um, but I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic that, um, that we will start seeing some improvements. Okay, that sounds great. Now, mm -hmm. um, I would be remiss of me not to ask you about high-speed rail. So, um, so I think that people, mo most people are very interested in find out where it will be. So I know there are three options. Do you ha have you made a choice, or has a choice been made? A choice has not been made by the council. Um, well, let me back up. A, the, a previous council has said that their preferred alignment would be downtown. 
um, there was a lot, there have been a lot of downtown business owners who wanted it to come downtown. Mm -hmm. Since that time, I think there's been a little bit of buyer's remorse. They kind of realize what those impacts are. And with the changes that the downtown is going through right now, they're kind of feeling like, oh my gosh, if high-speed rail were to come downtown, I don't know if our businesses would survive. We're not talking about, you know, construction period over a month or over a year. We're talking many years of disruption. Streets that have been here forever would suddenly disappear. Um, the school district is really concerned about uh, South Valley Junior High and the impacts there. So the bottom line is, we're not sure the downtown route is the best place for it. Another alternative would be east of the outlets. That poses its own set of problems because now it's outside the city limits of Gilroy and um, we don't want um, a train station necessarily out there. Um, and there would be no benefit to, to downtown. So we're really looking, trying to find a third option um, I'm not sure that third option is going to be any better than the other two. So the bottom line is the city council has not made a decision yet, but um, I'm hoping that this comes back by the end of the year for us to reevaluate those options. And the option is Gilroy's, the California, the Transit Authority or the, or the High Speed Rail Authority won't say, uh, here's the idea we like? Well, uh, Gilroy is only making our, our choice it's going to be up to the High Speed Rail Authority to finally decide where they want to put it. Okay. And again, I think, uh, I think they will probably pick the place that, that impacts their bottom line um, the least, I guess. Yeah, and they have, yeah, they, they're, they're over budget. So <laughs> <laughs> that's going to so, be in play for right, sure. Right, right, right. And then I don't want, you know, Gilroy to spend a bunch of time and money trying to pick a location that may never come to fruition. Yeah, yeah, so true. So in our last couple minutes, I would love to know if you, if everything went your way and you got to do everything you wanted um, to achieve while you were mayor, at the end of your term, what would Gilroy look like? Well, I think um, at the end of my term, I've only got three more years left. I would like us to see more police officers, uh, more firefighters. Uh, we have less firefighters today than we did 10 years ago, uh, yet our population has increased uh, over the last 10 years. So I want to add more firefighters. I w uh, we need to staff the Glen Loma Fire Station. I want to add more police officers. Um, again, it goes back to, to strong and safe neighborhoods. I would like to see us invest in our infrastructure and we've actually invested about $5 million over the last year in making street repairs, um, making investments in City Hall, kind of bringing us into the 21st century. Um, we are making progress on First Street. Uh, First Street should, uh, if everything goes well, we will start tearing up First Street in 2018, and uh, hopefully Caltrans will come along in spring of 2019 to totally redo First Street, which is a state highway. So that's all been, you know, um, my, my work to try to get our legislators, legislators aware of, the, um, of the, uh, the impacts of that road. Well, thank you, Mayor Roland Velasco. It's been a pleasure having you on the show tonight. And thank you for joining us on Inside Gilroy. Thank you, Becca. You're so welcome. <laughs> this was great.